On January 12, 1960, George Jackson was sentenced to one year to life for a $70 gas station robbery. He would serve 11 years, 7 months, with 7 of those years in solitary confinement. On August 21st, 1971, he was assassinated. In the intervening years, Jackson penned two centerpieces of revolutionary canonical texts, Soledad Brother and Blood in My Eye. incarcerated under a wonder life, a term that called for a wonder life, where I could have done one year and been released. I've done 10. That's more time than anybody in the state has ever done on a wonder life. When the prison gets Looking good. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Can't stop, won't stop. Machine. Can't stop, won't stop. Machine. Listen up. African people took the stand. 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 In the struggle throughout the land. In the struggle throughout the land. African people had a plan. African people had a plan. Seize the time, take the land. Seize the time, take the land. Couldn't stop. Couldn't stop. Had to win. Had to win. Wouldn't stop. Wouldn't stop. Till the end. Till the end. Free again. Free again. Okay, gentlemen, we're taking over. <laughs> Eyes up front. Here we go. Keep it moving, people. Quicken the pace a little bit, huh? Let's go, people. Keep it together. You gotta watch, okay? No, you gotta be listening to me. How many? I really don't know. Everything happened so fast. Keep it together. There you go. There you go. You can take our pictures. We are the revolutionaries. Free the Soldier Brothers by 3 o'clock and nobody will get hurt. We don't have the authority to negotiate that. You cover the left and the rear, okay? And get out of here now. Back him off! Back off! Back him off! You guys stay together. Don't look at me. Keep your fucking hands up front. God damn! Okay, okay. Here you go. Open up the van. There you go. Don't look at me. What's the shot? 50 50 at best. Don't fire. Don't fire. Hold it. Fire. There's too many friendlies in there. Okay, they're holding up. I think we made it. Peace. Welcome to another new Black Knowledge presentation. I be the God Rob Born Moon to Allah. The title of this is called The Origin of the Black August Tradition. Peace.
Peace. Towards the end of the video, which is a real occurrence, you heard the brother say, free the solar dad brothers by three o'clock and no one will get harmed. The solar dad brothers are to your left, which is George Jackson, um, John Clutchetti, and Fleeta Drumgo. It is important to uh, start with this because this is a part of the foundation of the Black August tradition. So I'm just going to read this newspaper clipping here. It says, Prison God is beaten to death. An unarmed guard was beaten to death Friday night at Sprawling Soledad Prison, where three prisoners were killed earlier this week. John V. Mills, 26, apparently was attacked by inmates in the housing wing of the prison and dead a short time later at the prison hospital from head injuries. The 3,000 inmates were locked in their cells on secure the prison, 100 miles south of San Francisco. Late Tuesday, at another guard, O. G. Miller, shot and killed three prisoners to break up a fight among 16 maximum security inmates in a different part of the prison. Since then, several hundred black prisoners have gone on a hunger strike demanding a federal investigation of the incident. Monterey County District Attorney Burton N. Young Friday said it was probably justified homicide by a public officer in the performance of his duty. He said the investigation was continuing. A Soledad spokesman said that a guard in a corridor of the central maximum security part of the prison noticed Friday night that the wing officer was missing. He summoned help and went into the wing where they found Mills lying on the floor. Um, a backdrop to this story is, as I said, there was a, a riot in the yard and three um, people were killed. Um, a major, one of the major figures was W.L. Nolan. He was one of uh, George Jackson's teachers. Um, the outcome of the case was that the officers were found not guilty and that they acted accordingly in which the evidence shows that they did not this was an international case this case was being covered nationally and people all around the world were watching this case so because of that action that officer was thrown off of the tier and there was a letter put on him saying one down to go this starts what you would say the solar dad brothers case so when they arrived there were no inmates out the cell there was no one out and they picked these three individuals because these were the revolutionary leaders in the jail What we're looking at now is one person who was a part of the Soledad Brothers Defense Committee. Her name is Faye Steiner. You can see that she is standing next to Harry Pugh Newton. She was once a part of his legal team. Ms. Steiner is known for editing George Jackson's first book called The Soledad Brothers and convincing a French intellectual by the name of Jean Garnett to write the foreword. Being that she did that, that book became an international seller and made the world privy to the conditions of black and brown people in the prison industrial complex. Some nine years later, she was murdered by an alleged member of the black gorilla family and the reasons stated are for abandoning George Jackson's legal team, allegedly. Following the incident that you saw that happened in the courtroom with comrade Jonathan Jackson, uh, another political activist was implicated, and her name is Angela Davis. They placed her on the FBI most wanted list. The reason why they did that is because they said that the weapons that were recovered were registered in her name. So on October 13, 1970, she was arrested in a New York City motel, 
She was extradited to California two months late and kept in a maximum security imprisonment at the Marion County Jail as pre-trial proceedings began to take shape. On June 4, 1972, after just 13 hours of deliberation, an all-white jury found Angela Davis not guilty of murder, kidnapping, and criminal conspiracy charges. As we look at this picture here, we see that you have Angela Davis and Jonathan Jackson at a rally for the Soledad Brothers in 1970. Jonathan, the younger brother of Soledad brother George Jackson, had become a bodyguard for Davis in response to the barrage of death threats she received after her membership in the Communist Party was revealed by an undercover FBI agent. Fast forward in a year, we are now up to George Jackson. You can see his pictures at the right. On August 12, 1971, George Jackson was fatally shot in the back by prison guards at St. Quentin. There were uh, two other inmates and three guards that were also killed. The days that followed in the adjustment center, inmates were beaten, shot, burned, and generally brutalized. There are several contradicting stories that were released to the press and the public. For more information on the chronology of the events that took place and the contradicting stories, you can click that link there. The traditional story goes as a lawyer came to see George Jackson and slid him a gun. Um, once they slid him the gun, he put it in his hair, which they say is a wig. Some stories say a cap. The officer saw it when they went to search him. The story goes he pulls the gun out and says the dragon is here and took over the A seat which is the uh, adjustment center during this melee um three officers were killed um officer's throat was slit and he tried to uh, escape and once he got outside he was shot in the back this lawyer was uh, went on the run for 13 years he came back and once he came back to the united states he was found not guilty so it is not clear on how George Jackson got the gun in the jail. The people who were charged with the incident with the guards being killed as well as the inmates were to be known as the San Quentin Six or became to be known as the San Quentin Six. Their names are Fleeta Drumgo, David Johnson, Hugo Pinnell, Johnny Larry Spain, Louis Talmatez and Willie Tate. Um, out of all of these people, Hugo Pinnell remained in prison and he was killed in the yard in a Folsom jail in 2015. This pamphlet here was written in 1975 by the San Quentin Six Self-Defense Committee. It's called the San Quentin Six Chronology of a Frame-Up. But inside of this pamphlet, you will see the San Quentin Six story. Here are some primary pictures of the San Quentin Six so we can get to know the people's characters. Former San Quentin Six defenders left to right, Bato Talmatez, David Johnson, and Willie Sandata tape speak at a rally with Inez Garcia at the San Francisco Civic Center, November 1976. Garcia was charged with murder for killing one of the two men who sexually assaulted her in 1974. She spent two years in prison before her conviction was overturned on appeal. Hers was one of several mid-1970 incidents that brought together a large coalition of activists challenging the prison as a site of racial and sexual oppression. On the right, you will see the San Quentin Six defendants, Plita Drumbo, Hugo Pinnell, and David Johnson as they protest by sitting on their way to court. We are now at the origin of the Black August tradition. 
The Black Orchid's tradition originated in California penal system to honor fallen freedom fighters Jonathan Jackson, George Jackson, William Christmas, James McLean, and Katara Golden, Rochelle McGee, and W.L. Nolan. Golden had helped initiate the holiday that later honored him. Several prisoners had discussed trying to launch something that would combine radical politics and spiritual sustainance, something more permanent. If less tangible than campaigns regarding individual cases that could keep the horrors of incarceration front and center on the outside. The development of the Black August is inseparable from the Black Gorilla family. With its direct connection to George Jackson, the BGF took up the mantle of the prison movement in the 1970s and for many people, the BGF became synonymous with the prison movement helping inside the source captive nation by dan berger um george jackson founded an organization called the black gorilla family uh upon his death this brother here katara golden he is one of the leaders in that organization when he was in prison as the story goes he was playing uh, a sport in the yard and he was pushed and hit his head the officers knowing who he was took their time to give him medical attention and the brother passed away he is also a student of w.l nolan continuing with the uh origin of the black august tradition it says organized chose august to commemorate jackson's Heroism and death. In 1977 and 1978, the protests were held on or around August 21st, and the organization sponsoring the march called itself the August 21st Coalition. The coalition staged numerous large de demonstrations at the gates of San Quentin. One should note that the prison movement or revolutionary movement that was started behind the walls was one of a kind, meaning that you have people who are already incarcerated starting a movement in jail behind enemy lines and they are having an effect on the outside world. At one point in time in history, you had colleges like Berkeley and activists used to look to these prisoners for guidance and the spirit of revolution. Um, one way we can see this is by the writings in the newspapers that they wrote to correspond back and forth. This newspaper here is called the Arm, Arm the Spirit. The Arm the Spirit newspaper was edited largely by San Quentin prisoner Kalama Oswald and distributed by a coalition that included the Prairie Fire Organization Committee and the United Prisoners Union. The publication of On the Spirit was one of several ways in which print culture sustained prisoner organizing in the mid and late 1970s. Another people was called the Fuse Magazine, and it was edited by James Yaka Salas, also known as Ataba Shana. The publication was produced by the New African Prisoners Organization in Illinois and was used to connect prison issues to the changing urban landscape of the 70s. There were other newspapers, the Black Panther, the Intercommunal Paper, and you have individuals that were also writing to those papers on um, giving their ideas and guidance from behind enemy lines. Now that we have an outline of the origin of the Black August tradition coming from behind enemy lines, we can now look at how it has expanded in the culture. And some of these things are observed as a part of it. Um, one is the arrival of Africans to Jamestown, Virginia in August 1619. The start of the Great Haitian Revolution in August 1791. Gabriel Possessor's Rebellion of August 30, 1800. 
the rebellion of Nat Turner, August 21st. The call for a general strike by enslaved new Africans by Henry Highline Garnett on August 22nd. The initiation of the major network that conducted the Underground Railroad, August 2nd, 1850. The March of Washington on August 28th, 1963. The Watts Rebellion of, eight, of 1965. The defense of the provisional government of the Republic of New Africa from an FBI assault in Mississippi on August 18th, 1971. And the bombing of Move family by Philadelphia police on August 8th, 1978. This is the state that we always been we always been fighting since the time we was on the boat to the time that we came off the boat. The tradition of Black August was just uplifted and put forward to the people as new revolutionary acts that were happening at that specific time. The movement never stops. The fight never stops. The struggle continues. Black August Today and Observations. To the right, you will see a flyer called Black August Organizing Committee. There exist two official committees, Black August Commemoration Committee and Black August Organizing Committee. There are four days of observation for resistance. That is the 1st, the 7th, the 13th, and the 21st. Fasting for the entire 24-hour of those days of resistance from midnight to midnight is a requirement and exercises encouraged as well as reading and community work. The exercises could be modified due to your work and um, your daily life. On this page here, you're actually looking at uh, books that were taken out of his cell after he was assassinated meaning George Jackson. There are a hundred books on the list. I will put the link in the description so that you'll be able to grab the PDF so you can look at these books. Um, we like to call it the George Jackson Challenge. During this month, I think you should read his book, Books, Soul of Die Brothers, and Blood in My Eye. Um, some of the books that's on this list is France Fanon, Black Skin, White Mask, um, Revolutionary Priest and a ton of other books that are dealing with revolutionary thought, social behavior, and revolutionary theology. I'm going to read a page from the book that I feel fits this day and time from Blood in My Eye. How do we raise a new revolutionary consciousness? against a system programmed against our old methods. Revolution is against the law. It will not be allowed, not in significant form. That makes the true revolutionary an outlaw and the black revolutionary a doomed man. As blacks, we must function as the vanguard in any hostilities. We must use a new approach, unite and revolutionize the black central city commune and slowly provide the people with the incentive to fight by allowing them to create programs that will meet all of their social, political, and economic needs. We must fill the vacuums left by the established order. We must push the settlers off our land when they won't cooperate with the new communal life of our system. We must learn from the people. We must learn from the workers, the discipline they are so highly skilled in. In return, we must teach them the benefits of our revolutionary ideals. We must move blacks to the forefront of a really productive assault on the outside enemy reactionary culture, not only on the production level, but in all significant areas of property relations. We must promote and support enforced rent strikes. Merchants must come over to our side or face the appropriation of their property for the commune. These are some words by George Jackson that I also feel that need to be noted. He states, settle your quarrels, come together and understand what your reality of your situation is. 
understand that fascism is already here. That people are already dying who could be saved. That generations more will live poor, butchered, half-lives if you fail to act. Do what must be done. Discover your humanity and love your revolution. George Jackson. I think these words are imperative and they fit this day and time. Um, you should also note or also be very weary of the person who says that these people are street scholars. Be very weary of the person who tells you to turn away from the youth who are involved in street organizations. Be very weary of the person who is scared to talk to the youth and are on their bourgeoisie train and living their life and their capitalistic dream. Be very weary of these people. Understand, truth is the revealer in time. With that, I say peace, black power.